Good morning. <coughs> Good morning. Day five of the journey. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Day five. Day five of the journey. Come on in. Day five. Come on in. It's day five of the journey. Are you ready? Are you ready to sing praises to your God? Good morning, good morning, welcome, 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 good morning, good morning, good morning, welcome, welcome. Let us give thanks. Let's give thanks for another day. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning, Grenada. Good morning, Kingston, Jamaica. Good morning, Canada. Good morning. Good morning, Connecticut. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome as you join. Good morning, Connecticut. Good morning, um, Bloomfield. Good morning, East Hartford. Good morning, Birmingham, England. Good morning, South Carolina. Good morning, good morning, New York. Good morning. Good morning, New Jersey. Good morning, Barbados. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Hartford, East Hartford, welcome, Brooklyn, welcome, 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 yes, good morning, grab your Bible, we're going into the Word, we're going to dig into the Word today because some of us need to be reminded who God is, <clears throat> yeah, we need to be reminded of who our daddy is, this is our view today. A lot of people are looking forward to it. Here it is. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As you join in, remember, share. Go ahead and begin to share. Invite your friends. Invite those friends that you told about the prayer, the prayer line. Invite your friends who you told about the fasting. Invite them. Bring them in. Come on in. Let us give thanks to God. He has given us another day. The Bible reminds us. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. This is the day. This is the day. Yes, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. It's beautiful out. Hallelujah. It's beautiful out. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Friday. It's Friday morning. It's a blessing. We are alive. We have made it. God have been good unto us. Hallelujah. My God. He have been good unto us. Hallelujah. God bless you. Those that are praying for me. Because, you know, some people are out there praying for me. With this allergy that I deal with every year. I've been drinking ginger. I've been eating ginger. See, it's the crystals. It's very good. This is what I've been taking. 
in hot water and cold water. Be beloved God, go ahead and begin to share, 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 share. London, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Florida, Canada, Jamaica, South Africa. Go ahead, people of God, and begin to share. Invite them. Invite them, Barbados, Trinidad, Aruba, Sister Opal Beckford, yes, Aruba. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, we are going to pray, people of God. We are going to give God thanks. The Bible said in all things, we should give God thanks. And we can't prove ungratefulness to God. Because a lot of people that are younger than us died during this pandemic. They already died. And, and we are here. Sister Janetta, I owe you a phone call. <laughs> I know you're keeping quiet and you're saying, I wonder if Reverend get my get my mail. I receive your mail but and I owe you a call, so I will give you a call. You know, it's not luck. There is no such thing as luck when it comes down to God's business. It's not luck. You know, Sister Tanya Lee, welcome. God bless you, my brother over there in London one more time. Welcome. People of God, it's not luck while, while we are alive. Younger, people that are younger than us died. And they were not sick in their body. You know, their body were not able to withstand this uh, virus. So they died. There are, are women and men that are more physically fit than us. And they didn't make it. Aruba, welcome. They didn't make it. So... I'm here to let you know it's the grace of God why we are here. It's not because we are from certain family, because money involved. No, money cannot save us. I was reading an article. Excuse my voice. It's, it's cracking. It's cracking. It's coming back. I was reading an article about this doctor here in America. His his, um, his colleagues thought he was going to die because he got the virus. And he said he has never experienced anything like this. So, you know, because he's a doctor, they have to, in order to move the shame from their eyes, they had to go hard to make sure this doctor didn't die. And he was young. He's not even 50. Young doctor. He got the virus. So they transfer him from... One hospital to the next, to the next, to the next. Finally, he's better now. So I just want you to know it's not luck. The reason why they had to prove themselves with this doctor. He is also a foreigner. Yes, I'm saying it. Because some people, you know, they don't want nobody to expose them. They don't want to be exposed. But the guy is a foreigner and he's a very good doctor. He's an asset to the company that he's working for. But I, we're talking about the coronavirus. The man also got some home remedy. People have got it's time for us to eat healthy. Junk food don't make it. It can't cut the mustard. It's time for us to start messing around with junk food and take care of ourselves. People have got to listen to me. Good morning. Church Pen Jamaica, welcome. Yes, hallelujah. We have to take better care for ourselves. Stop eating all this fried food and, and, and eating all this processed food from can. I'm saying it because it's true. This is what's killing young people. All this processed food that is in the can. You don't know how long it's been on the shelf and you buy it and you stock it up. For it to look good in your house. People have got to make things from scratch. It's time for us to take better care of ourselves in this time. Even in the Bible. It reminds us that the, one of the reasons. Why the children of Israel. Wanted to go back into slavery. Food. Yes. Yes. The food. They talk about the food. They were complaining to Moses. 
Because Moses didn't have any food to give them. Moses had to rely on God to bless them. And they were arguing with Moses. They wanted food. Hallelujah. But God will never let you die during this pandemic. If you are faithful to God, he will never allow this pandemic to take you out. Nor your family members. I'm still checking. Yesterday I found out that I had some family members in New York. They, they, they had got it. And now they, they, they got over it. So I came to let you know, it's not unto death. It's just for some of us to take better care of ourselves. This is a wake-up call. This pandemic is a wake-up call. More is, listen to me, there is more coming. More terrible than this. So this is just preparing us for what's ahead of us. People of God, we have to be radical. I might not look like what you want me to look like. I might not be saying the things that you personally want me to say. But I came to tell you one thing. You better take care of yourself. You better take care of yourself. Because a friend of mine called me from England a few days ago. And he said to me, woman of God, did you see the news? Because I know you like the news. I said, no, what? He said, the woman... Family members, they told them that the lady died. And they said, no, we don't believe. We want to make sure we see our dead mother before we go down to the funeral parlor to make any arrangements. And when they opened that body bag, the woman was still breathing. People of God, take care of yourself. Especially in a foreign country, especially in America, especially in Canada. The woman never die. But they are they they pronounce the woman dead. Hallelujah. And the woman was breathing. They zip up Habako Shatoyo. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Somebody said so true. People of God, listen to me. People of God, listen to me. Take care of your family members in this time. If you have some people that are up in age like senior citizen, give them healthy food. If you have, in, if you have to take care of them, if you have you know, the opportunity, because it's a privilege to take care of an old person. It is a privilege. It is a blessing. A lot of us don't know. Some caregivers, I want to let you know. It's time to think like you're taking care of your mother or your dad. It's a privilege. God has given you a privilege to care for an elder. It's a privilege, people of God. It's time for us to start treating people right. We need that treatment when we get old. Some of us, we think we're not going to get old. No, you will get old. I mean, if you make it out of this next season, because another season is coming and worse than this. Hallelujah. So it's time for us to pray, people of God. They zip up the body bag. Put the, why, why would you put a, a live person into a body bag and zip it up? My God, this is wickedness. This is wickedness, people of God. We are here to worship God, but many people don't know what's going on. They put the woman in the body bag and she was not dead. And they zip it up and they tag it. My God. It's wickedness. So I'm here to say, if God... If my chance, God bless you with an opportunity to care for an older person or to care for any human being for that matter. Be honest. Be honest with your job. Be honest with all your transaction. Be honest with everything that you do. Be honest with everything that is presented to you in this time. Be honest with the people that God entrusts you with. Be honest, people of God, because we are in the end time. All kind of things are happening. They zip up. God Almighty, they zip up that body bag, my God, with that woman in there that was still breathing. And I came to tell you, it's hundreds and thousands of people that went like that. 
Because once they did that, you'll suffocate and die. People of God, you might not know me personally, but I used to be a caregiver. The last caregiving job I work, I almost lose my right arm, my whole shoulder. And until this day, that lady never called me to check upon me because she never believed. But I'm here to tell you, when God bless you to be a caregiver, do it with everything you got. Give it everything you got. I'm here to tell you, God watches over his people. Some caregivers are mean. They're not nice. They're abusive. They're in it for the money. And I'm talking from the head to the tail, from doctors all the way down. If you don't like what you do, find something to do that you love. Because once you're doing something that you love, you will have passion. You will have passion. When you, have, when you love God, you love the things of God. We need to be gentle. We need to be giving. We need to be caring. I'm saying this right here because there's a lot of us that receive the job because of circumstances. And really, of a fact, we're just doing it for the funds. I say funds. I don't say money anymore. I say for the funds. Because it's just funding some situations that you, you have. When God entrusts you with something, give it your best shot. Let somebody say, oh my God, she was never, you know, she was never here for a long time. But she has impacted us. She make me want to work. You go to a place and you see people, they are working. Listen to me. God is watching over us in everything we do. We call ourselves Christians, but we are not Christians in the job. We are not Christians in the home. We are only Christians when we go to church. And God is saying that my word is final. We are bringing down judgment upon ourselves and our children when we are mean and dishonest out there in the workforce because we are getting paid to be mean and nasty. You see, I'm not going to sit here. It's cold today. Yeah, it's a little chilly. And I'm not going outside. This is where I am. If you're just joining, this is where I am. But I'm taking precautions, I'm taking care of myself. Here, here is where we are today. This is what the Lord has given us. We got to be honest. A lot of Christians are not honest. We, are, we still lie. We are still stealing. We need deliverance. A lot of us Christians, we need deliverance. We need to be delivered. We need to be set free. And this is why we take some jobs that we can still we can still be nasty and evil and wicked. Bible reminds us that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. And nobody cannot know it unless God reveal it. It's true. I, I, I used to work in the medical field. I was a caregiver. So I know what I'm saying is true. I'm hitting the nail on the head today. Why? Because some people, they receive the position. They, they, when I first started, I got it because I had no choice. I was in a situation and it was helping to pay some bills. And I always keep my license active because I know that this is my plan B. Whatever I do at the office and if it don't work out, sometimes I take a one year break and go do, take care of people. I like to give care. Before I came to this country, I came here as a massage therapist. When I came to this country with my license as a massage therapist from Jamaica. And I have never worked a day as a masseuse. No. Never. I'm here to talk to somebody today. You might be thinking, this job pay well, but this person is not nice. Pray for them. Many of us, the reason why God give us some job is for us to pray for these persons, these clients, these patients, whatever we call them. 
God wants us to care for them because God, some of us, we want to open our own business one day. But if we cannot give good care to one person, how are you going to run a facility with a hundred people? If God cannot trust you with one person, how is he going to trust you with 25 people? I'm just saying, we need to run our own business because we do it so well. But remember, we are just doing it for the funds. Because if you are not effective, if this person never receive healing through your prayers, and you are a Christian, you call yourself a child of God, you have a client that is sick, and you are not there releasing prayers upon this person, my God, you failed. You failed. I came to talk to, I am speaking the truth. I had a client, she had a stroke. She, because of bad diet, she never eat right, she drink beer, she eat chips and she go to bed and somehow she had a stroke and they found her outside, the, the, the landscaper found her in the yard, she slept there overnight, so yeah, she was a little demented and when I was assigned to that lady, I even had this woman join in the gym. You see, you got to be nice to people. Whatever you want for your parents. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know why the Lord is using me to say these things. <sighs> you cannot die for hungry as long as you are in the healthcare industry. But you have to give love. You have to show love. Pray for the people that you're looking, looking after. Don't just do it for the money. These things make me angry. You see, a lot of them can be abusive because of their medical condition. So this is when your skill set is not right there with your mindset. Because if you were trained for the position that you have, then you will know that this is a part of the job. The person's reaction is based on their medication and their illnesses. If you are not trained, get the proper training. Some people get the job because of hookup. And when the person begins to act up, you want to slap them. You want to do, oh, 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 that's not of God. We are children of God. Even in schools, I'm talking about some educators now. You see, I can only talk like this because of the fields that I've been into. As an educator, you need to desire the best for the person that God entrusts you with. You cannot take God out of your job. Make sure your skill set is aligned with your mindset. People of God, make sure your skill set is aligned with your mindset. Because if your skill set, which means whatever your area of discipline you choose to work, if it's not aligned, with what's going on in the place that you are, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. So I'm talking about some educators, people that teach. Some people have this, this, they teach. Do the right thing. Today, God is speaking to every profession. Today, God is speaking to every profession. Be honest in your business dealings during this pandemic. Because you will answer for it. We cannot rob God. We cannot be dishonest and talk about we're going to go to certain prayer group for them to pray with you. Listen, God don't take ugliness. God don't support ugliness. God don't deal with ugliness. Darkness is not of God. Some of us, we need deliverance and we still take that job because we can sleep, we can eat for free, and at the same time, we are being mean and nasty to these people. I'm touching everybody today because some of us, we're too comfortable in the foolishness. Last night, you know, the Lord was downloading stuff in me and I'm like, thank you, Jesus. What is this? What is this? He said, talk to the people because they need help. And I'm, when a man or a woman have a job and they don't know what to do, they need help with it. Some of us would take job because that's the first thing came to us. We don't have the skills, but we can learn and we take it. And we're not doing well. And we're not asking for help. 
We are not asking for help. We are not asking for help on these jobs. Because we think we know what we are doing. And really some of us are breaking the law. The way we talk to these people. Some of us we take their pictures and post on social media. Did you know that's a violation? Many of us. I never do it. I never take a picture with a client and post it on Facebook. Because I never used to. I was never that comfortable to take picture with them. Did you know that it's against the law to post a client picture on social media? It's against the law. People have got to listen to me. If you have never gone to school for this thing that you're doing because the money is good, do some online research. Because many of us violate the law, in this, in, especially in foreign country. Many of us are violating the law. And on Sunday we go and we put on that big tides. Because money look good. But you're violating the law. You're not doing right. You're not being effective at work. You're not. Secretly. This is why some of these people put camera in their place. To protect their family members. Because they know the law. They know the truth. People of God, listen to me. This is time for us to be serious because a lot of people are going to get into trouble after this pandemic. A lot of them. A lot of people won't be coming back on social media after this pandemic because they got into trouble. They don't know the law. They have no knowledge of their job. They don't know what they're doing. They're not asking for help. And they're not searching. They're not doing any research. <clears throat> My God, we take things too personal. It's time for us to be act, to act professional. It's not personal, it's your profession. I don't want you to agree with me if you know that what I'm saying is not true. But I'm saying based on experiences and based on what the Lord is showing me that some people are coming here on this broadcast and they are looking for help, but they are breaking the law. And they don't know what they are doing. We got to be careful, people of God. We can't just take any job because it's available. Ask God to lead us to the right place. I know a lot of people, you know, school is not for everybody. But they got trainings that you can go to get to learn hands on. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Why I can't start preaching? I want to start preach. But the Spirit of the Lord won't let me. Because this right here, it's information. What I'm saying is information that will help individuals to go and, 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 and do a little bit of research. Somebody said, I don't ever have to go to school for that. People call me for work because I work good. But you're abusive. Your words are abusive. You abuse these people with your words. You don't know how to hold your tongue. Somebody said, I don't have to go to school. Nobody don't. They just call me and introduce me because I look nice all the time. I dress nice. But you never know when you're giving an overdose. You never know when one medication go against the other. So there are times, different times, and you don't follow protocol. You have to follow protocol, people of God. Protocol. This is not about us. It's all about the, the line of duty that we choose. Some of us are on front line by accident. Some of us find us, ourselves on the front line. By accident. And lo and behold. You don't know that a frontline position. Is a setup To destroy you. It's in the book of Kings. First Kings. When God told um, Samuel. He said. Tell them. What a king will do for them. A king will take your daughters. And bring them in their kitchen to cook. And a king will take your son. And put him on the front line and send him to war. 
So many people end up right now on the front line by accident because had they have known that this is a front line, that this pandemic is going to drag you out there. Somebody said to me, woman of God, I have to go to work because they said if I don't go, they're going to cancel my license. I said, the devil is a liar. That's not true. Call Department of Health. Call Department of Health. You can refuse a position. They can write you up, but they cannot cancel your license. That's, a, that's, that's, that's false. That information is false. People of God, we need to know our rights. We need to know how to treat people. We need to know our position. We need to know who we are. We need to know what we are supposed to do. Our assignment. We, we, we are not supposed to make any commitment at these positions. So when other people take over from you, they have a problem with it. Because you were there making commitments that go outside of the job. It's time for us that are out there working to pay attention to the position that God has entrusted us in. It's time. It is time. My brothers and my sisters, it is time. And I rest my case. Hallelujah. You see, there are some things that God, God will never allow to happen until he, some, some people, that will never be able to eat properly until you arrive. There are some things that will never be able to happen until you showed up. And one of the reasons why is when Samuel went to anoint David, he was not home. He was not home. <clears throat> and Jesse brought out all his other kids. David was the youngest one. And he was the one that's taking care of the animals. But during the time when Samuel got there, everybody else was home. And David, Je Samuel said to Jesse, do you have any more children? Do you have any more sons? He said, yes, I do. But that one is out in the field. David, he's a little boy. He's dirty. Today the Lord sent me here to talk to somebody that you might be left behind. You might be the one that they never respect. Everybody was in honor because all the children of Samuel, of, of Jesse came out and they looked good. They dressed nice. They were clean. But there are some things that need to get done and it cannot happen until you show up. Samuel said, where is the other son? And when David came, he was dirty, stink. God said, that's the one I want you to anoint. You see, David was honest in all his dealings while he was out there in the field. He never complained. In the rain, I understand that Bethlehem is six miles away from Jerusalem. David never complained. It's a rainy. They always have rain. A lot of rain fall out there in Bethlehem. It's rainy. So just imagine him coming in with mud. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Somebody you are saying, I can't wait for the woman of God to start preaching because I know she have a word for me. Hallelujah. Somebody you're saying, I cannot wait for the woman of God to start because I know God is going to use her to say something that will connect with my life. David was out there in the field. The reason why the Lord was using me to talk about honesty with your work and your discipline and your behavior and how you treat people and how you react to problem. David was out there in the field working. That was his little thing. He played music. He was an intercessor. Hallelujah. But guess what? When Samuel said send for him. I guess Jesse was ashamed. 
I'm talking Bible people of God. I guess Jesse was ashamed because they know David is going to walk in the house filled with mud. They know David is going to walk up in that place dirty, stinky, smell like the sheep and the goat because they have goat and sheep. And guess what? God said, Samuel, we're not going to eat this food. We're not going to sit down. Samuel said, no, I'm not going to sit until he show up. So Matthew, some positions are waiting for other people in your family. But it will never happen until you show up. It will never happen until you get the respect. It will never happen until they forgive you. It will never happen until, they yes, they call you and invite you to that table. Some blessings need to be in some family. But it will never show up until you show up. Because of the way they treated you in the past. Because of what they did to you in the past as family member. And God is saying... Until you show up, they cannot sit down to eat. Until you show up, they will never have no peace. Until you come, they were going to eat without David. They were going to have that feast. Because Samuel brought a heifer. So they were going to eat and drink and do everything without David. While he was out there in the field. He Listen to me. When you are chosen, nobody will respect you. When you are chosen... Because you will be different. Because you will look different. You will walk different. You will talk different. You will act different. I don't know who the Lord is talking to right now. But the Lord said when you are chosen. Because Samuel said to them. We cannot sit down until David come. You see. This is where discipline and training comes in. You got to be disciplined in all your doings. People of God. You have to be disciplined. You have to be disciplined. In everything you do, humble yourself. Don't complain. Don't complain. You might be the only one in your family that cannot make certain moves right now. But don't complain. David was getting ready to be anointed for pain. David was getting ready to be anointed for struggles. Yes, because after he got anointed, he had to go back out there in the field. But then guess what? The king got sick. He was anointed to be king. But then the king, the reigning king got sick. But David had a skill. I don't know who I am talking to. You might be at this job and you are overqualified and you are underpaid. But guess what? The position is going to open up. A door is about to open for you. God is getting ready to bless you. Humble yourself. Saul got sick. And when Saul got sick, David had to go to play the harp for Saul to get healing and deliverance. Because David have a deliverance ministry. He was a harpist. He knew how to play certain music to soothe your spirit. To set you free. So Saul, the king, he lost his charisma. As a king. He lost the anointing as a king. Because he never played that role well. As a king. He was chosen because of his looks. People of God be careful. Be careful. Don't choose. Don't tell anybody. I know I look. But I look better than that aide. I look better than that secretary. I look better than that nurse. I look better than that doctor. I look better than that pharmacist. Or that assistant pharmacist. I look better than them. It's not about your looks. Eliab looked better than David. He did. Because when Samuel see him. Samuel said. Whoa. He hears God's anointed God said no I reject that one you see allow God to do it for you I came out here to tell you today I challenge you be careful how you treat people you see God don't like ugly and some of us we take the job and every job we go and we are dishonest we charge for more than what we work for I'm, I, people have got it sound like I'm throwing some stones today but Take your hit. Take your hit. Because this will fix some dishonesty right now. There's a lot of dishonesty going on in this pandemic. A lot. 
And I'm not talking about workers. I'm talking about bosses. I'm talking to some manager now. A lot of dishonesty. Two days ago, I went to FedEx. And the manager was right there asking the young lady that was attending to my paperwork, saying to her, can you come in Saturday? She said, yes. Why? He said, just come if you can. She said, but why? Saturday is my day off. He said, can you come? No, they want her to come and get tested for coronavirus on her day off and she won't be paid. I'm talking about managers now, people of God. We got to be honest. I'm here to tell you, a lot of people might not like all the messages, but they are coming to correct Habako Shataya. They are coming to fix mighty God. They are coming to straighten you out. We have to be honest in all our doings, all our transactions. We need to be honest, people of God. It's time for us to be honest. It's time for us to tell God we're getting ready to fix these things. We know we mess up all the time. We know we lie all the time. But the woman of God came and I feel bad. And Lord forgive me. The woman of God was talking about it and she don't know me. Lord forgive me for my shortcomings. Lord forgive me. People of God let us ask God for forgiveness. Let us ask God for forgiveness in this time. Because we know we are not right in some areas of our own. Yes it's true. We know we are dishonest. We know we make some move. We know we put in for extra time that we didn't work. A lot of people are doing it. People of God, be honest with all your dealings. Don't allow money to rob your salvation. Hallelujah. Don't allow money to destroy your salvation or your integrity. Maintain your in Maintain your integrity. Maintain your integrity. Be honest. I don't know why the Lord is using me to talk about these things. Because I'm not working, I'm home. So why is God using me to say this? Somebody here needed to hear this. Somebody here needed to hear this. Be honest. Maintain your integrity. Hold your head up high as a child of God. Let them respect you. Don't be caught stealing time. Don't be caught trying to hustle. No, don't hustle. We are God's children. We are blessed. We are favored. I might not be saying it the way you know it. Because I'm not directing it to you. You already had your convictions. Hallelujah. It's time for us to get it right. We cannot be high-minded. We can't love pleasure more than how we love God. We cannot love money more than how we love God. Since this pandemic, many of you don't even pay offering in church. And every day you're on social media. It's tr Listen to me. God is angry right now with some of us and our behavior. Since this pandemic, many of us, we don't even pay offering because we said, Pastor, don't even call you. Pastor's not going to call you. You've been going to church all your life. Why, you do, why do you want the pastor to call you? Why do you want pastor to call you for what? He's just another person or she's just another person. Going through the same things you're going through. You was not giving your money to the pastor all along. You was giving it to the ministry. Not to the pastor. It doesn't matter how much you were paying. You was not supporting pastor. You were supporting the ministry. Some of you are so upset. Because pastor don't call you since this pandemic. Why? Don't be angry. You're not paying pastor bills. You're supporting the ministry. Pastor don't need to call you. No, it's time for you to practice what you learned those years you're in church. Pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Pray for your clients. Pray for your friends. Pray for them. Pray for them. The Bible says all men ought to pray. Pray for them. Pray for them. Lift them up in prayer. Nobody shouldn't have to call you to pray. It's true. 
And you go on ministries and they bless you. Nobody didn't have to ask you to bless the ministry. Because you have not heard nothing from your pastor since this pandemic. But you're still alive. Huh? I don't know who the Lord is using me to rub. But I am rubbing some feathers right now. Why? Because some people need to shake up. Get out of your flesh. To fleshy. Stop being fleshy. Hallelujah. I have a daughter in England. One of my spiritual daughters. She said, Mom, honestly, I love how you beat me sometime with the word. You're beaten, but I'm taking my beating because it's true. It's true. Many of you come and you frown and you have this and that to say, but you know within yourself it's true. If I cannot tell you the truth, who's going to tell you the truth? Your pastor is not here. I'm here. I'm speaking the word in your life. And if I can't tell you the truth, I fail. I fail. And this is not friendship. This is ministry. That's what you call ministry. You're supposed to be strong in the Lord. But friendship will weaken you. Friendship will weaken you because friendship go to your soft side. You need to be strong in the word. You need to be strong in the Lord. We are not here begging anything. We are sharing the word. And I'm breaking it down according to the leading of the Holy Ghost. Line upon line and precept upon precept. Get out of your flesh. Hallelujah. In the book of Habakkuk, in the book of Second Timothy, chapter 3. And I'm going to start at verse 5. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort, they which creep into the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led them away into diverse lust. So Timothy is saying, Paul is saying, Timothy is saying, women are silly. Some women are silly. And they allow some men to lead them into captive. This word is for some women that are going through this pandemic because you're not working. Don't let the flesh bother you too much. Put the flesh under subjection. I came to talk to you today, women. Women and daughter of Zion. Don't let the flesh take you out. <laughs> Don't let nobody lead you astray. Stand on the word of God. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. <laughs> I'm talking about Timothy. Paul was Timothy's spiritual son. So Timothy is here talking like Paul. Always learning. And don't know how to detect the truth. Don't know how to exercise knowledge. Don't know how to practice what you learn. People of God, the Lord sent me here today to remind you, you need to be strong in the word. Put away flesh. I know this message is going hard and deep. But don't, don't hate the messenger. It's the word of God. He said, no. As Janus and Jambre withstood Moses, so does these also resist the truth. So Janus and Jambre wanted to destroy Moses because Moses was with the law. It was not Moses. God gave Moses the words. Moses did not make no law. God was just using Moses in his time. And in Moses' time, they were, God tell him, use the blood and touch the doorpost. But when Jesus Christ came, the high priest, his blood was shed for us. So now we are exercising our faith. In Moses' time, they were not talking much about faith because Moses, Moses was the one that God was speaking to, but now God is speaking to all of us. Moses was the mediator. 
God was using him to go back and forth. Moses used to go behind the veil and talk to God and come back and tell the people what God said. But now we have the word of God. They didn't have the word of God. Moses was the mouthpiece. So now we have the blood that was shed for us to use it, to apply it. We shouldn't have to be dishonest to have anything because we have the blood. We know the power of the blood. If you need more money, apply for a better position. If you need a bigger job, go back to school. It's simple. We don't have to be dishonest around here. We, we don't have to steal around here. We shouldn't have to beg. The righteous will never be forsaken. And this is why the Bible reminds us as a Christian, we need to find people that are in ministry and support their ministry. We need to bless. Uh, 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 if you have a business you want to get done, find a person that is a Christian and bless their business. Give what you have to Christians. Don't give as a child of God. Don't give what you have out there to people that are that don't know or worship God. Bless God's people. This is what the Bible reminds us to do. Don't squander all that you have on people of this world. Squander it on God's people. Be a blessing so God will bring back returns. Many returns will come back to you. Many returns will come back in your life. My God, whatever leave your wallet will never leave your life. Whatever leave your pocketbook will never leave your life. Just do the right thing. Many of us, we invest in business. People that don't even know God, they are idol worshippers. And this is why we as Christians, we do not, we're not blessed because we are following the crowd. We are chasing after the man or the woman who don't know God. We are pushing down their business place doors every day, going to bless them. But are we blessing Christians? Are we blessing a Christian who have a business? In this time, this is what we need to search. Research Christian business and bless it. It's true. We don't want to be. We don't like that pastor man over there. We don't like that pastor woman over there. Oh. Didn't you read the Bible? He said, touch not my anointed. And do my prophet no harm. We don't have no business speaking against nobody that God is using. The Bible says we need to go search for them and bless them. Love harmony, the Bible said we should go search for them and bless them. Joseph, the Bible said we should go and search for God's people and bless them. Bless the women them so they don't have to go lay down with any anybody for money. Bless the men that they strengthen them so they can go home and take care of their family. Sometimes God will tell a release a seed upon somebody's life. And you release the seed. And it came back in tenfolds. Why? Because you were obedient. Many of us will go around and looking for people because we want to feel good about ourselves. So we look for people who are not even Christians and try to be friends with them so we could look good. That's not of God. That is not, not, that is not of God. Don't let nobody fool you. Jesus is real. And the reason why today is Friday and he will use me here to say these things because a lot of people here today are making reservations and are making, you know, setting up appointments with people to do things that is not of God. A lot of people won't like this message, but so what? God is pleased. God is pleased. As long as God is pleased, man, I don't worry about I don't worry about what man say. As long as God is pleased, I am good. Hallelujah. As long as God is pleased, I am okay. Jesus was not only preaching. He was teaching. He was casting out demons. He was teaching his disciples. He was feeding them. Jesus did many deeds, good deeds. So he was not just going around as, as an evangelist. He was the greatest evangelist. But he was not just evangelizing. He was training the disciples how to run ministry. He was training them. He said, go get food and feed them. So if you know somebody who don't have food, feed them and stop being selfish. Peter said, um, but Jesus is a lot of them. Jesus said, feed them, get food. Some of us, we complain too much. 
God tell her to do something and you're telling God how to do it? No, that's not how it works. And this is why a lot of women in these days are getting laid and dragged out of their element into sin. Right here, 2 Timothy chapter 3. He said, they, for, for of this sort, they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sin, led away with diverse loss. Don't let your flesh bother you during this pandemic. Calm down. Tell your flesh, calm down. Talk to your flesh. Tell the flesh, calm down. I don't have a husband. Calm down. I don't have a wife. Go sit down. Speak to your flesh and encourage yourself. Hallelujah. Speak to your flesh. Encourage yourself. My God. It said they tried to destroy Moses' ministry. With Corrupt and reprobate mind. He said. But they shall proceed no further. For their folly. Shall be manifested. Unto all men. As. Uh, as there also was. You see people of God. God is watching us in this time. With our dishonesty at work. In our house. In ministry. God is listening. And this is why I can come here and be speaking like this as if I was in your house last night. As, as if I was on your phone or as if I was listening to your conversation this morning. God is moving. He will never let me come out here in this place. If you are here for the first time, welcome. I'm just not going out there today. I'm not dealing with it. With the allergy. The allergen that's out there. The trees. But this is where we are today. This is where God take us. Hallelujah. Right there. Right there. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you said the first <laughs> you said second Timothy verse two said hard working farmer <laughs> hard working farmer yes it did it said the husband that laboreth must be first partaker of his fruits hallelujah many people they use their fruits to support things that's not of God it's time for us to stop it it's time for in this time, people of God, we cannot use our substance to support ungodly things. We can't. Bible said the word of God is not bound. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. This is how Paul was talking. Hallelujah. Paul said according to my gospel so he claimed it to be his he claimed it to be his gospel people of God let me share something with you it might seem like I'm coming hard and strong but when you really go back and watch the replay of this message when you're all alone you will begin to understand that you know this is true it might seem like she's coming hard and she's upset but this is the Holy Spirit. God wants us to do right. And in this pandemic, you will be challenged with a lot of different obstacles. It's a challenge, but don't fail. Don't fail, God. Prove all men to be liars. Prove every man to be a liar. And the word of God to be true. Prove every man to be a liar. Jesus. It's a, the Bible reminds us in chapter 3. I'm into 2 Timothy chapter 3. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. Hallelujah. All scriptures are inspired. But though 
as fully known my doctrine manner of life purpose faith long suffering charity and patience persecution affliction so you see all these things will come purpose your faith will be in question long suffering charity patience persecution affliction which some came to me unto me at antioch and antioch i think that's in turkey yeah paul went to turkey what's outside of israel that was my god antioch was out there in turkey this is why turkey turkey is so famous because these places were mentioned in the bible and that's what make them famous mm -hmm. people of god it's time for us to get into the word of god he said what persecution i endured but out of them all the lord deliver me so whatever persecution you're going through pastor madeline garcia welcome buenos dias you see a lot of persecution will come when you're into ministry for instance i've been persecuted so many times the devil assigned all different kinds of people but i overcame them because i'm not gonna be weak in my flesh i don't i don't deal with problems ministry problems i don't deal with it with my flesh i deal with it spiritually i deal with it in the spirit even if it yes i get on my knees and i deal with it no, my right knee begin to hurt. So I stand and I deal with it. I deal with it in the spirit. You can't deal with spiritual. Somebody might come at you and you think they want to fight you. No, it's not physical. During this pandemic and somebody is challenging you, take it to the Lord in prayer. Deal with it in the spiritual realms. Deal with it. Destroy some things in the spirit. Like we, we are going to do that today. Hallelujah. We are about Shataya. We are going to destroy some things. And this is why I'm stuck here on discipline and principles. It's called discipline and principle, people of God. Whatever you do, you're going to have to give an account for it. Whatever you say, you're going to have to, you, go, you will be accounted for it. Paul said, yes, all that will give will live godly in christ jesus suffer even jesus himself suffer persecution many of us we don't want to be bothered with church or church business anymore why because we have go, gone through so much sister so and so keep fighting brother so and so have this kind of idea people of god even jesus went through it and this is why it's time for us to calm down calm down we can't be hyper Ministry, we don't need energy. We need to be calm. We need a spirit. We need the presence of the Lord to be with us. And when we are hyper, our, our, our behavior chase away the Holy Spirit. You know, some of us during this time, we have never cursed so much and we are cursing. We can't be cursing. We cannot be speaking profanity during this time. It's time for us to pray. You know, I was reminded this morning, I'm not here to say certain things, but I'm here to let you know, people of God, I was reminded this morning. I was reminded this morning. You pray in your sleep, you preach. I, I, my husband told me, I'm preaching in my sleep. I'm singing in my sleep. I'm preaching. This is how I, I, I know it's the zeal. And whatever zeal you have, don't let nobody destroy your zeal. It's supposed to get stronger in this time, not weaker. So strengthen your zeal in the Lord. Strengthen your zeal in Christ. Don't get weak. Don't let nobody destroy you. Whatever people say, if it go against you, brush it off. Brush it off. Love Armand, you said so true, you're cursed enough. Don't curse, don't let nobody drag you out of your element. Don't let nobody pull you out of your character just to get to their level. People have got to listen to me in this time. Don't be dragged out of your element. Some people are assigned to destroy ministry and now is their time. Don't let them destroy you or what God has for you. Because if you are dragged out of your element, you'll miss your blessing. 
You will miss your blessing. You don't have to do these things. It's the plan of the enemy to destroy your ministry. Like it or not, everybody have a ministry. If you didn't know, we all have a different, everybody have a different ministry trap inside of us. It's true. Some people, they swear, you see, and this is why. You have to stay in your lane. You, you have to be prayed up. You, because if you get up every day and pray and worship God, I promise you, no demon in hell can distract you. It doesn't matter what they come with. Even if they come with 10 legion, it can't. Because you're prayed up. You're, you're strong in the Lord. You're, you're, you're prepared. And this is when the scripture came in. Job chapter 38 verse 12. Have you command your morning? This is when you pray and you command your day. And you said no demon from hell will never distract me today. I am tired of this foolishness. No demon from hell will never get me to swear today. I'm, I'm prophesying over my life. I am speaking this into being. My God. I hear my woman of God said on the, on, on, on the phone today. No demon in hell can move her. I will never be shaken. So minister to yourself and prophesy over your life. My God, my God, don't let the devil distract you or what God has for you. The moment you become distracted, that's what the devil wants. And this is what verse 13 said. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Don't be a part of that gang. Don't be a part of that gang. He said, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. This is why we have to be careful of the people that we follow. Know who you're learning from. Somebody said, thank you, woman of God, for sound doctrine. Hallelujah. Some people will never, <laughs> some people will never make a comment here. They go back and they text me in the back. But it's true that some people don't want nobody even knowing that they're following this platform. It's true. Some people do not want anyone to know that they are following this platform. But I'm keeping it real with you today. Know who you're following. The Bible says know who you labor with. It means that know who you're praying with. Know who you are praying with. Know who you are going to. Hallelujah for the word. Because the word is filling you up. When You see, Timothy was reiterating Paul all the way. He said, and that from a child, though as the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. True faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures. Listen to this. All scriptures. Every scripture in the Bible. Every scripture in the Holy Bible. Is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here with the word of God. And it's for, con listen to me, it's to inspire you. It's to profit you for sound doctrine, for reproof, hallelujah, and to correct you when you're wrong. To correct you when you mess up. To correct you when you slip up. And to instruct you into righteousness. To lead you into the path that you need to follow. A lot of times some people don't. I'm not going on that woman of God page. Because I think she's talking about me. I'm not talking about you. You're not the only one here. You're not the only one here with that kind of problems. You're not the only one here with certain problems. So this word had to come. It's not personal. 
So get out of your flesh. Get out of your flesh. A lot of sometimes when I talk about my testimonies, a lot of people take it personal. Why? But remember, other people are here going through the same things and they don't know what to do. Some people don't know that when they talk about their past, they will heal from it. I came to talk to somebody here today. This is not about you or you or you or you. A lot of people that you will share this broadcast with, lo and behold, you did not know that they were molested. Lo and behold, you did not know that they were raped. Lo and behold, you did not know that they are into a relationship that does not glorify God. So the woman I've got her to come today to talk. Because when she talk and you share it because it's not from for you. And this is why I said if this message is not for you, go ahead and share it. Go ahead and share it if it's not for you. Who the cap fit? Let them wear it. I am not taking back no talk that God used me to bring here on this platform. I'm not taking it back. So listen to me. Don't even text me after this and tell me that woman of God you were talking about me. It's not personal. It's not personal. God want to help his children. So if you are in your flesh and you get angry and you don't want to come back on the live and you want to be upset. Kudos, because I am not taking back nothing that the Lord used me to say. I will never apologize because I know it's true. I'm not even going to talk about, talk about discernment right now. I'm saying this because I know it's true. Many people are upset. They don't want to hear the truth. They want you to accept them and be up all up with them. And you forgot that we are dealing with social distancing. We are dealing with social distancing. Socialize with me from a distance. It's not personal people of God. Don't take it personal. People need to know when they are wrong. So they can go and repent. Somebody said I love this platform. I learned so much on this platform. I will never leave. Thank you woman of God. The wisdom you place inside me. I love you. God bless you my sister. This is not friendship, people of God. Somebody said the Bible is the foundation of Christianity. Hey, in it we learn about the human condition, our need for salvation, God's plan, through Christ everlasting. Joy that awaits those who trust in, of course, it's true. My God. It is true. It is true, people of God. We can't afford in this time. We cannot afford in this time to lose ourselves because of a couple of dollars. We can't afford to lose ourselves. You know how many women are, gonna, are pregnant right now because of this pandemic? Because some of them are not even married and, and, and they have to settle. You know how many women I've been raped during this pandemic and they have to keep it quiet. You know how many men have been raped? Yes, men have been raped during this pandemic and they have to keep it hush hush. Why? Because they decided to subject themselves to some small assistance. Somebody might wave a few dollars, a couple of dollar bills before their face. I'm looking for a dollar bill. Somebody might wave a couple of dollars before their face. And because they are in a situation not working, they said, I'll take it. I'll comply. Don't comply because of a couple of dollars, people of God. We are strong. We are daughters of Zion. We are sons of the Most High God. We are children of God. It's not time for us to subject ourselves to foolishness. It's time for us to be strong in the Lord, in the word of God. This is why the Bible will always have a reminder what the scriptures are here for. It said it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So when the word came to instruct you and to correct you, just take it and deal with it. I'm serious. Just deal with it. Because you know what you're doing in your home. 
You know what you're doing at the workplace. You know the things that you say out of your mouth when you're on the phone. It's time for you to fix your words. It's time for you to get your life in order. Many times when people provoke me, I said, thank God I'm saved because if I was not saved, my God right now I would be in trouble. Yeah. I said it because this is the time when trials will come. Remember, they persecute Jesus Christ. And the man who read the scripture said he was persecuted for the word of God. I have been persecuted so many times, but I'm still here. This time next year, I'm still going to be preaching. I will preach until the day my life leaves my body. Because when you are called to ministry, it's different from when you call yourself. When God set you apart to do his work, you, nothing else will interest you. When the time came, when you give it all in and said, Lord, have your way, I'm done. I'm done trying to fix things myself. I'm done trying to get it right. You do it, Lord. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me, O oh God, so I can worship you. Tell God. Ask for forgiveness of your sins. Ask Ababoko Sharabaka Sataya. We have done so much wrong since this pandemic. We have said so many, so, oh God, our mouth become so dirty since this pandemic. Jesus. We curse so many people out in, the, in, 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 in silence since this pandemic. We are angry at our pastor because they don't call us. We are angry at the woman of God because she don't call you. Nobody don't need to call you. It's your time to worship God. It's your time to practice what you learn. It's your time to dig into the word of God. It's your time to sit down with your family member. If you're, by your, if you're not by yourself. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Use this pandemic to your advantage. If you're home and you're not working, study the word of God. It's your time. A lot of people take this personal. Because I receive phone calls sometimes. I just shake my head. A lot of people take my messages personal and said I'm talking about them on Facebook. <laughs> Who have time for that? <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Yes, we need to pray. People are taking this personal and directing this message to them to themselves. And it only means that if you know you're not living right, it's time to fix it with God. Hey, that don't have nothing to do with the woman of God. Because she don't know nothing about your personal life. No, I don't. There are some things that when I go back to watch this broadcast, I said, did I say all that? Did I say all that? One man said, prayer is a gift and it's a privilege. And it's a gift to offer unto all to become, my God, wheelers of the word, the great power of prayer. Power is, prayer is a gift. Because not everybody can pray. Hallelujah. Jesus. Let us enter into our prayer closet right now, people of God. Let us abako shotoroboko sakataya. A lot of us are oppressed as children of God. We are oppressed, we are stressed, we are depressed. Especially since this pandemic. Especially since this pandemic. My God. We are oppressed. We are sick to our stomach. We don't have appetite. We don't know what to do. Because we are nervous. But we will have to remember the word. Said many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord will deliver us out of them all. We cannot afford to let this pandemic destroy us. Because greater days are ahead. Better days are ahead. Mm -hmm. 
We can't afford to let this pandemic destroy what God is doing in our life. Many of us are going to receive our breakthrough during this pandemic. Jesus. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. My God. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up. And make me all. Thank you, Jesus. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it up. And make me oh. Hallelujah. Alabakorobo koshia. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Hallelujah. Come and quench. Jesus. Abakosha, Rabaka, Sataya. People of God, let us pray. Angels are around this car. <laughs> Angels are in the scar. Angels are here. Angel Bakoru Woko Shababaka Sataya. Angels are here. Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and begin to bless the Lord. So, Baba Koroko Shere Babaya, somebody open your mouth and bless God. Rebebe Koshokoto, Raya da Baba Kashaya, Lada da Dara Boko Roboko Shaya Kasataya, Hende Bekerebe Kasata Roboko So, Baba Kashataya. The Lord said, Tell my people that in this season don't compromise because of food. The children of Israel wanted to go back into Pharaoh's care, into slavery because of the food. Jesus. They wanted to go back into Pharaoh's care because they were eating food, good food. Hallelujah. Jesus, my God. Jesus. My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and pray. The Spirit of the Lord is saying, don't compromise in this time because of your belly. Don't compromise because of your belly. Don't compromise because of a few dollars. Don't let nobody fool you because of a few dollars. Don't let nobody wave a couple of dollars in your face for you to compromise your salvation. 
Don't let nobody wave a couple of dollars before you for you to sleep with them. My God. Jesus. Hella baba koshea. Man toro boko soko toro boko sheba kasataya. Rebebe ke shebe kasakoto. Jesus. Hella mana kasheteya. Hallelujah. Bible said the children of Israel said unto them would to God that we die by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pot when we did eat bread to full to the full that you have brought us forth into the wilderness to kill the whole assembly with hungry the children of Israel were arguing with Moses because when they were in Egypt, they were eating food. But when they were in the wilderness, they were fasting and praying to God. Hallelujah. And therefore, God instruct Moses. The Bible said, I'm in the book of Exodus chapter 16 and verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people will go out and gather to a certain, a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which will bring them twice as much. People of God, the Lord is leading me with these scriptures because a lot of people there is nothing in their house to eat. But I pray for God Almighty to provide for you and your family right now. I pray for the Lord that we serve to provide for you and your family right now. I encourage you, my sisters and my brothers, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Don't compromise your salvation because of food. Don't compromise your salvation because of an extra dollar. The Lord was using me to say all those things to tell you. He's your help. Let the Lord be your help. In this time, people of God, open a mouth and pray. I will not compromise my salvation in this pandemic. I will not compromise my salvation in this pandemic. I will not compromise my salvation during this pandemic in Jesus' name. No, I will not. I will not compromise my salvation during this pandemic because of an extra dollar. I will not destroy my ministry and put it in jeopardy because of a dollar. Hallelujah. God said to Moses, they want bread. They talk about bread. I'm going to rain down bread from heaven. I'm going to bring it to you since you're asking for it. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Don't complain. I came to talk to some people here today. Stop complaining. The Lord said, whatever you need, ask for it. Seek and you shall find. Hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Abakoshotoyo. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Ask. <coughs> I'm choking. Oh God. Ask and it shall be given. Ask him. Ask God for what you need. He will provide. He will provide for you. The Lord will provide. He's your provider. 
Don't compromise your salvation in this time. People will rise up against you to prove if you really know God, if you really are a Christian. Your faith in Christ will be challenged in this time. But I came to tell my brothers and my sisters, don't compromise. <laughs> don't compromise. Hallelujah. Don't compromise your salvation. Hold on to the promises of God. Whatever you need, he will supply it. You don't have to be dishonest to get anything. You don't have to lie to get anything. You don't have to steal because he's your provider. He is your provider. Sister Angela Irvin, you don't have to lie to get anything from God. You don't have to steal Sister Angela Irvin to get anything. Sister Angela Irvin, you don't have to be dishonest in this time. Don't be dishonest in this time. Whatever the Lord tell you to do, do it. Sister Abigail, just be honest in this time and watch God bless you. Sister Cherise, be honest in this time and allow God to do it in your life. Just be honest, people of God. You don't have to lie. You don't have to make up a story for anything at all. Just be honest in this time. Sister Sophia, Sister Gracia, you don't have to lie. Just be honest. Prove God. Prove God for yourself in this season. Roko Tabaka Shataya. Prove God for yourself in this season. This is where we are today. <laughs> And this is the place that the Lord is taking us in this time. Look, this is where we are all around. All around. This is where we are. You don't have to lie. You don't have to be afraid. Joy is coming in the morning. The reason why the Lord used me to say all these things is because he wants you to change. He wants you to start to do right. He wants you to be honest. He wants you to live a clean life. He wants you to be respected. He wants when they're ready to give you that award. As, as, as yes, as work of the year. My God. Uh, yes, our staff of the month, our staff of the year. You will say, yes, I deserve it because I put in those hours. I never have to stay time. I never have to lie about the clock. I never have to beg anybody anything because God provided. He provides for his own. He takes care of his own. I came to talk to somebody open your mouth and thank God for what he's about to do in your life. God is getting ready to bless you. God is getting ready to bless you. You don't have to lie. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to steal. You don't have to be afraid in this time. Don't compromise your salvation. God is opening doors for you that no man can shut. God is doing it in your life. You don't have to compromise. Look around you. My God, he has been good unto you. Look around you. He is faithful. God is faithful. He is faithful. He will take care of you. Look around you. My God. Look around you. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Look around you. He is God. He is God all by himself. He is faithful. He never lies. He keeps his covenant. He's a covenant keeping God. He said when men on earth have failed you. I am here. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Turn to me. Seek and you will find Ask and it shall be given unto you. Knock and it shall be open. Oh God, I came to talk to somebody today. I don't know what you're looking for. But the Lord said, go for it. Somebody, you're here. I hear the number 40. 40,000. My God, the Lord said, go for it and invest. Go forth and invest. It's a good season to invest. Buy your stocks. Buy your shares. The Lord said, go for it. Hallelujah. I don't know about I don't know who the Lord is using me to tell this, but he said, go for it with the investment. You have been praying on it for three days. The Lord said, go for it. Hallelujah. The Lord said, go for it with your investment. 
Hallelujah. The Lord said to tell you, go forth with the investment plans that you're making. My God. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Because the Lord said, I am going to bless 65 people right now. The Lord said, I'm going to bless 65 people right now. Six, five, 65. Rokotabaya kashataya. Open your mouth and pray. Any blessing that is here on this life for you, take it by force right now. Take it by force right now. Take it by force right now. In Jesus' mighty name, take it by force. Any blabber koroko shataya. Sixty-five people are getting a breakthrough right now on this live, right now on this platform. Sixty-five people. The Lord said, "I'm opening doors." Are you one of the sixty-five? Take your portion. Take your portion. Take your portion. Take your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take your portion. Some people came. Around 22 people. While I was talking about being honest and dishonest. And the Lord told them. Bless the ministry. 22. Are you one of the 22? The number is at the bottom of the screen. If you're one of the 22. 22 people the Lord told to bless the ministry. Because they were in the wrong and the Lord said, I want to fix your life. I want to bless you. I want to turn it around for you. But bless the ministry. That's the word of God. Be obedient people of God. Hallelujah. I came to talk to some people today. You want to make it right with God. You want to do the right thing. But every turn, every turn you make, sin is right there presenting itself. So today, we're going to pray. Every strong man that's in your way. Every strong man that's standing before you, every strong man that's in your business, every strong man that's up above Kurabakashataya, every strong man that's in your way, we destroy him right now. We destroy Koshataya. Every strong man. Some people they want to make some decisions, but every turn they make, it was the strong man. It is the strong man. The devil himself show up. My God, my God. Every strong man, I'm out of God. Jesus. My God. My God. Every strong man. Every strong man. Jesus. Jesus. Every strong man. Hallelujah. Every strong man, Jesus, that's standing before you, we destroy them right now. My God, my God, my God, every strong man in your way, every strong man, every strong man, every strong man my God. Every strong man standing before you. Every strong man, Jesus. Every strong man, Jesus, standing before you. My God. Every strong man, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. There are some Joshua. The Lord said, I got 29 Joshua on this page. 29 Joshua is on this page today on this platform. I'm getting ready to elevate you. 29 Joshua. There are some Joshua right here. Soldiers for Jesus Christ. He said, I have brought 29 Joshua today on this platform. So now I'm into the book of Zechariah chapter 3. Hallelujah. And the Bible reminds us in Zechariah, people of God, open your ears to hear this. Open your ears. The Lord said 29 people are here and they are Joshua upon this platform. And I'm going to bless them. I'm going to give them the Joshua anointing today. Hallelujah. It said, and he showed me Joshua. The high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan at the right hand to resist him. My God. Satan. 
was right there. The Bible said Satan was standing right next to the angel. And he was accusing Joshua. Satan was accusing Joshua. The Lord said, I brought some Joshua today here. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to rest that Joshua anointing upon them. Because God see you as a high priest. My God, God see you as a high priest. He said some Joshua have been placed today right here. Oh God, Satan was accusing Joshua. God was getting ready to bless Joshua. So the angel of the Lord was there with the blessing. But Satan showed up and was accusing Joshua. Trying to get Joshua to curse. Trying to get Joshua to swear. Trying to get Joshua upset. But I came today to tell you, hold your peace. Tell somebody, hold your peace. Tell somebody, hold your peace. Because today I'm receiving what the Lord has for me. My God, have mercy today. I'm receiving what the Lord has for me. Tell the devil to hold his peace. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. The Bible reminds us that God himself had to show up. Bible said, and the Lord said unto Satan, I rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord that, re that I've chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this brand pluck up out of the fire? God said he pluck you up out of the fire. And no demon in hell will prevent you from getting a breakthrough today. Not one. Not one. Makarabako shotoyo. Tell the devil, hold your peace. Tell the devil, hold your peace. My God. The Bible said, now Joshua was clothed in filthy garment and stood before the angel. They see you in dirty clothes. But they know that you are God's chosen masterpiece. They see you look some kind of way. They see you look a certain kind of way. They see you drive a certain kind of car. They see you live in a certain neighborhood. They see you live in a whole house. But they don't know that God is preparing you for a moment like this. I came to talk to somebody. Open your mouth and let us pray. Every anointing that's upon this life. I take my portion. I release the Joshua anointing right now. I release the Joshua anointing right now. I release the Joshua anointing right now right now right now right now right now in jesus mighty name devil hold your peace hallelujah devil hold your peace and back up god had to back that up from satan to back up god was getting ready to elevate him to fix him up but the devil showed up. The devil showed up and began to accuse the man. Many of you here have been accused. Many of you here, the devil is accusing you to block you. But I came to tell you, if I be a woman of God, Jesus Christ, if I be a woman of God, we send fire upon them right now. 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 In Jesus name. Those. That have been assigned. To accuse you. We destroy them right now by fire. Burn and die by fire. In Jesus name. The Lord said. I'm blessing some people. I'm releasing Joshua anointing. And I have told some people to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God. Today. We release the fire of God. All around us. We release the fire of God all around us. We release the fire of God all around us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We release the fire of God. My God. 
my God. We release fire. Sometimes you look on your very own children. And you say, I know something is wrong with this child. Because God told me my child was going to be great. My child is gifted. But all I see is the works of the enemy coming out of my child. So today we cover every children that is attached to this platform. Every child, every if you are here and you have a child, your child is attached because you're here. So we cover every child that has been attached to this platform in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You look at your children and you know the hand of God is upon them, but all you see is the work of the devil. Today we cover them in the blood. Today we cover them in the blood. Today we cover them in the blood in Jesus name cover them in the blood cover them in the blood my brother Darren cover your daughter in the blood sister Claudette cover your children in the blood cover them cover them some, some, some of you women you, you, you have not given birth yet because the devil is grabbing onto your womb and today he's releasing it in the name of Jesus Christ. Today he's releasing it. Some women have not given birth yet. And they wonder why. You're not barren. The Lord said you are not barren. Anything that is holding on to your womb. We take it back right now. We take it back right now. We take it. We snatch it. We snatch it. In the name of Jesus Christ. We snatch it. My God. Cover your children in the blood. You know when you give birth to your child. You receive word that this child is going to be great. And all you see. Your child making money. But you don't see any greatness. But today we decree. And we declare it done. In the name of Jesus Christ. Greatness will come. Greatness will come. Greatness will come. Greatness will come in Jesus' mighty name. Release blessing upon your children. You know you heard that your children was going to be great. You know greatness is in you. Some of you didn't get to, 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 to live that life because sickness came. Some of you didn't get to do whatever you came on earth to do. But I decree and I declare whatever you didn't get to do, your children will do it. Your children will do it. Your children will do it. It will manifest in your children in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. My God, what a word. I just love the Lord and the things of God. I love the Lord and the things of God. Hallelujah. Jesus. I love the Lord and I love the things of God. Jesus. I love the Lord. My phone is dying. Hallelujah. I love the Lord and the things of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Decl declare it. Declare it upon your life. Declare it upon your unborn children. Declare it. Declare it upon your grandchildren. If you didn't get to do certain things, we pray for this greatness to be handed down to your children. We pray for it to be handed down to the children so they can be great. Hallelujah. Yes. Remember when 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 um David turned over the the, the the throne to Solomon, Nathan and the other prophets that were there with Solomon praying for him that day. They pray for Solomon to be greater. They pray for Solomon to do greater things. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. But I just feel the presence of the Holy Ghost that won't release me. Solomon, they prayed for Solomon to do greater things than what David did. And therefore, Solomon didn't have wisdom. He did not. And because he didn't have wisdom, <clears throat> he did some things. And he fell asleep. He made a sacrifice to God. He did not have wisdom, so 
he did not know how to handle situation and he fell asleep and God visited Solomon in his dream and gave him wisdom in a dream. May the Lord give you wisdom in a dream. Solomon never have wisdom. But the men that prayed for Solomon when he was getting the, the throne, when he was seated that day, they prayed for Solomon to be greater, to do greater things than David. People of God, this is why. This is why you have to pray for good things to come for your children. Whatever David couldn't do, Solomon was able to do it. My brother George Adolphus, may you do great things on this earth. May you declare some things and they come to pass. Sister Raquel, may your children do wonders upon this land in the name of Jesus Christ. Sister Michelle, may your children do wonders in this country. Sister Carlene Sturgeon, may your children and your grandchildren do mighty things for God. Hey, Alabako Shataya, love our money. May your name be great in America. May your name be great in America. May those that's in Jamaica waiting for your downfall be disgraced. May the Lord shut up your mouth of the enemies. May the Lord shut up the mouth of your enemies. May the My brother Joseph, God bless you. May the Lord bless your finances. May the Bakurako Shaya. May the Lord bless your finances. Beverly, may your children be great over there in Canada. May they do exploit in Canada. My God, Sister Denise Henry, wherever you're located, may God turn it around for you. May you experience the hand of God like never before. Jasmine Mims, may you celebrate because God changed the story of your boys. May you celebrate. Jasmine Mims, may you celebrate. Because the Lord have changed the story in your children's life and your grandchildren's lives. May you celebrate. May you celebrate in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sister Teresa, may the hand of the Lord rest upon you and your family. Persia, may you do mighty things, great things for the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Michelle, continue to do good. Sister Gracia, continue to minister to your family because I see your crying tears of joy because God finally answered your, your prayer. Hallelujah. Alicia, I speak life over you today. Alicia Johnson, I speak life over you today. Every doubt that's in your mind, my God, everything that caused you to doubt, Everything that caused you to doubt the blessings that came to your life. May God open your eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. May God Almighty that we serve open your spiritual eyes to see greatness that has entered into your territory in Jesus name. Sister Anita, I pray for you and your children. I bless you this hour. I cover you in the blood. I bless your finances today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sister Sophia, continue to do good. You are about to reap your reward for doing good. Continue to do good. And watch God bless you. Sister Christine, my God, continue. Be the woman of God that God called you to be. Continue being the woman of God that he has called you to be. I speak the Elijah anointing upon your life right now in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, I speak that Elijah anointing. I release that Elijah anointing upon you. Jesus, woman of God. I release that Elijah anointing upon your life. I release that Elijah Abba in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My God. Sister Janetta, just stay quiet. Continue being quiet and worship your God.
Worship him. Continue to worship God in your prayer closet. Because you will be rewarded. Continue to Continue to worship God in your prayer closet. You will be rewarded. You will be rewarded. You will be rewarded in the mighty name of Jesus. My God. Beverly Campbell, the Lord is saying that he's holding you. He's holding you up with his righteous right hand. Beverly, continue worshiping your God. The Lord is saying he's holding you up with his righteous right hand. Declare your healing. Petronia Bailey, declare your healing and your deliverance. Because a celebration is coming to your family. And you're going to need your strength. God has answered some prayers that you prayed. And the celebration is coming. Continue to worship God. Hallelujah. Sister Camille, God bless you. God bless your finances. I don't know you. But the Lord said I should pray for your finances. May the God that we serve increase you. Increase your finances. Increase every area of money that you spend. Money you already sown to other ministries. May God generate those money. May those seeds begin to germinate and come right back to you in a thousand folds. I don't know you, but today the Lord said I should speak in your life. I decree and I declare it done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sister Glenn's George, whatever you're waiting on, I'm praying for the Lord to show it to you before this pandemic is over. I'm releasing this blessing upon your life. Whatever you have been waiting on, you said it's long enough. You waited long enough, but I release it today upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Sister Glenn's George, God bless you. Hallelujah. Sister Jenny Lynn, God bless you. God bless you. We decree and we declare every word that you receive to come to pass. Every prophetic word that was, yes, every prophetic word that was released over your life to come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Michelle. It is well. It is well. It is well. Mercy born. Continue to worship your God. You'll be unstoppable. You will be unstoppable. Elizabeth Palmer. Continue to worship your God. Because he's getting ready to move upon you. Like the same way he moved. The spirit of the Lord move upon the face of the waters. In the book of Genesis chapter 1. God is getting ready to move upon your life. He's getting ready to move in. The Spirit of the Lord is getting ready to do it for you, Elizabeth Palmer. He's going to put his word into your mouth and you're going to speak life into being in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jasmine Mims, continue to serve. Continue to be a servant. Continue to serve your God. Hallelujah. Continue to serve your God. Makarabako Shataya. Hallelujah. Continue to serve your God. Ivan Palmer. Continue to serve. Sister Gracia. Sister Denise Gray. Continue to serve. Camila Bell. Hold on to his hand. Hold on to his unchanging hand. Sister Cherise. Continue to hold on to his unchanging hands. My God. Sister Carella. Trust God. Sister Carella. Trust God. Sister Carol, trust God. Sister Carol, trust God. Continue to trust God. Sister Kayan. Sister Kayan, continue to trust God. Continue. My God. Continue. My Karabako Shatoyo. Continue to trust God. Hold on to his unchanging hands. Yes, Sister Marsha, continue to worship him. Because God is going to surprise. He's going to do something. Each time I see your name, I hear the Lord say, tell her I'm going to surprise her. He's going to surprise you. Because you're still supporting other ministries. And God is saying that all your seeds are going to germinate. All those ministries. Other people go to some ministries and their money never grow. Some, some, you have, yes. I'm saying it because 
<laughs> the Spirit of the Lord is telling me that there is a ministry that you keep going to. And nobody don't get testimony from that ministry. People keep sowing in the ministry. And nobody is receiving anything. The Lord said to tell you, he's going to bless you. Because you, 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 you believe. You believe in him for a miracle. You believe in God. Marsha, I'm talking to you, Sister Marsha Bansi. You are believing God. Believing in God for a miracle. But today I'm praying that your husband surrender to God. Today, I'm praying for the man that you marry to surrender all to God. Your husband loves God. But whatever strong man that's standing in his way, it's fleshy. But today, I'm praying for God Almighty to change his heart. It's his heart. He's a good man. So I'm praying for God to change his heart and for salvation to come. Praying for him to accept Christ as his personal savior. Don't give up. No matter what nobody tell you, don't give up. The Lord love you. God said he will do it in his time. In his time. Hallelujah. People of God, if you are on this fasting with us, my time is far spent. If you are on this fasting with us, I'll be back at noon. So get a cracker close by you or a piece of bread or a glass of grape juice close by you. So we can take our communion at 12. The Lord mentioned 20 something people that needs to bless the ministry people of god don't be disobedient you need your blessings you're coming here for blessing and the lord revealed today that over 22 people needed to bless the ministry and i am here in this wilderness because of my obedience to god i am here in this wilderness because of my obedience to god in the car so i don't have to sneeze that much i'm not going out there today so i'm encouraging you to be obedient i'm not asking you for anything the lord said 22 people need to bless the ministry i'm not asking you for a dime because when god speak that's it when god speak that's it <laughs> When God speak, that city told me to drive my car, come up here early morning to do it. So I'm doing my part. So when God speak, you, you say you want to be blessed. You say you need your blessing. You say you need a breakthrough. A lot of you are not working and I'm praying for God to open doors in your life. I, I, I know this for a fact. A lot of people are on Facebook every day looking for people to pray for them to get work or for money to come or for favor to come. So I'm praying for the Lord to release favor. A lot of people don't have their documents. They don't have no job in this time. Some are blessed enough to have a job. So some people that don't have documents, I remember you in prayer. And I'm praying for God Almighty to open your door so you could be free to do the things that you want to do. And I want you to know as I'm praying this prayer that documents don't make you blessed. Documents just give you access to travel overseas. And to have access to certain things. Because a lot of people here in this country, they don't have documents and they are blessed. So they are favored. So when you pray, ask God for favor. Don't ask him for documents. Ask him for favor. Because when favor come, you'll receive your documents from unknown source. Because I'm praying for each and every one of you here that does not have your documents, your legal documents to travel and go see your family. Many of you are depressed right now because you don't have access to see your children only on social media or on the phone. In this time because you're not able to travel and you're worried about your child. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for God to do it for you so the children can see you and have access to you. A lot of people, are, it's true. You know, we're not here just for those that are free. We are here for those that are, you know, in bondage too. Because that is kind of 
a little bit of bandage. Some people are stuck because of the pandemic and I'm praying for God to release you. Some people are stuck because of the pandemic. I'm praying for God Almighty to release you. Some people don't have no documents. I'm praying for God to release you because you have business back home to handle. And in this time, people are being very dishonest. It's true. I'm saying all these things because I know it's true. So I'm praying for God to release documents upon those that are undocumented. Some of you, your documents are in and it's stuck because of the pandemic. I'm praying for favor all over the atmosphere. I'm praying for favor. I'm praying for your children that are far away to receive favor from man and favor from God so they can be free. I'm praying for God to open doors. For those that are bound and locked up and locked away. Some people can't even go nowhere because, you know, people, people, they put fear in you because you don't have your document. They want to place fear in you. I bind up that spirit of fear right now in Jesus name. I bind it up. Some people put fear in you because they know you don't have your documents. Don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. God is getting ready to open doors. Anytime God is saying all these things in your ear, it's because he's getting ready to show you favor. Because many of you, before this time next year, you will be on the plane traveling overseas, going on vacation, going far away. Yes, Sister Cherise, going far away. Hallelujah. I'm saying these things. Many of you desire to travel to America, but you don't even have no place to stay and you have that visa. I'm praying for God to open doors for you. Sister Fiona, welcome. God bless you. I'm praying for you too. I'm praying for your healing. I want to go jogging with you. Sister Fiona, woman of God, you're running away. Where are you? Sister Fiona, Fiona Dennis, I want to go jogging with you. I'm praying for healing to come so we can go jogging, pain-free. Hallelujah. My God, the hand of the Lord is upon his people. And I'm here to let you know, people of God, I'm praying for the favor of God to locate you. Not just for documents, but for favor, for things to come. And for you to be settled in ministry. Settle. So when God settles you, you don't have to worry. Abigail, don't worry. Just continue praying. Stop crying and, and pray. Exercise your faith. You're a woman of God. Don't think you're going to live life and not go through anything. Even Jesus Christ was prosecuted. And he was king of kings. He was king of kings and he was prosecuted. Do you want to come and go through life and don't, ex, 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 don't experience anything? How are you going to minister the word of God without experience? You need testimony. Whatever you're going through, it's testimony. Your test is going to be your testimony when you overcome. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So let the testimony flow. Let the test continue to come because he will, re yes, he will help you through it. He will help you through it, Sister Sophia. Sister Teresa, he will help you through it. Carry love. The Lord will help you through all that you're going through. He's already started. Just trust in him, my brother Wilfred. Continue to trust and believe. God will do it for you. The same way he did it for Joseph. Joseph went to prison. The woman tried to rape him. But he said, I'm not going to let you rape me, you Egyptian woman. And guess what? If he raped, if he had allowed this Egyptian woman to rape him. Hey, he would never be a prime minister. It would be a curse. I came to talk to you, my brother. Wilfred Campbell, I came to talk to you. May you receive the anointing of Joseph. I don't know nothing about you and your family, but I'm praying for the anointing of Joseph to come upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm praying for, the anointing of Joseph. The Joseph anointing. Because when God favor you, when God do it for your people of God, it's well done. Hallelujah. Jesus. Holy Spirit won't let me go. Holy Spirit won't let me go. 
Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sister Cathy, just continue praying. Because I see you. I see you, but you know what you have to do for the Lord. You know what you have to do for the Lord. So just go, go ahead and continue praying. You know, because sometimes we postpone our blessing because we want things a certain way. Sister Claudia, continue praying. Continue worshiping your God in your, in your prayer closet. Hallelujah. Sister Carolyn, just, just continue love on the Lord. Sister Sharon, God bless you and your family. God bless you and your family because things are about to change. God bless you and your family. People of God, I'm encouraging you. We have over 100 people here or more. Go ahead and go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. It's the same name, Reverend Joyce Lynn Radigan. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so we can go live from YouTube. Hallelujah. Yes. Go ahead, go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. This is where we are today, right there, all the way. This is where we are today. I have to hide from the pollen. I'm not going out there. Mm -mm. It's beautiful, but I'm not putting my foot out there. Not one foot I'm putting outside. No, sorry, not today. Yes, people of God, you know, my time is up. Hallelujah, my time is up. My time is up. I have to go. It's Friday. It's almost, it's almost 10 30. I'll be back in an hour and a half so we can break our communion. I'll be back at 12. I'll be back at 12. It's 10 30 here, 10 26 a.m. So I'll be back in an hour and a half and I will see you on the live. Come back with your little piece of bread and your grape juice or your crackers and your water. All right. I seal every word in your life, every word that was spoken upon this live broadcast. I seal it here today in the name of Jesus Christ. I seal it. I lock it down in the mighty name of Jesus. Be blessed of the Lord, people of God. And remember, come back in an hour and a half. I'll be back. God bless you. Stay blessed. Stay blessed. Stay blessed and people of God, be obedient to the voice of God. For those of you that are working and the Lord said, bless the ministry, do it. I'm not asking you for anything. Bless the ministry. God bless you. You want your blessing? Bye. Take care. <laughs>